Today, I thought we'd have some fun little bit. We'll go through some features on TradingView that I use every single day that you might not know about necessarily. It's going to be fun. So let's have right in. All right, so this is something I, I want to do for a while. We'll go through some features that people don't use too often or they just don't know about. And it's cool to kind of share some tips here. You might know these things, you might not know them at all. And let me know in the comment section below which ones you know and which one you didn't know or which one you will use after this video. I'll be curious to hear. Today, I'll show you five actual tricks that you might not know exist on TradingView. And I'll show you how I use them and how you can use them for better trading. First thing I want to show you is pretty cool. It's how to use multiple indicators on specific time frame. Now, I love this setup because it allows me to use different things, different time frames. Also, sometimes I want to use like a moving average on a daily chart, but I don't want to set moving average on the four hour chart to the one hour chart. It doesn't matter to me. So what you can do is very cool. Is any indicator you put in your chart, you can just click on it. Again, you can open the feature over here in the corner. We can see all the indicators. Have an EMA here that's on, so I have an 8 EMA and a 21 EMA for this video example. I can also just click on it if I want to and open up this menu here. So my 21 EMA is set for, if I go here to visibility, it's set for only the daily chart. So one day to 366 days or one week to 52 weeks. So it's only set to these time frames. Okay, you won't see it on these time frames here. If I put it on the one hour chart, so 124 will show up on all the one hour charts and five hour, four hour, eight hours, all that stuff, right? But I don't want to have this. I don't care because I have a Bollinger Band on this time frame. Now you'll see if I go on the four hour chart, I have a Bollinger Band showing up. And this Bollinger Band here is set for all the time frames below basically 24 hours. So 24 hours and below, not including one day. So if it's one day, well, it won't show up. If it's five weeks or a weekly chart, it won't show up. Only my moving average will show up. Kind of go away to organize your charts if you don't want to see your stuff on all time frames. I'll actually do the same thing with my RSI here. My RSI is used for a breakout strategy on the lower time frame charts. I don't care about it in the daily chart, weekly chart, I don't care, monthly, I don't care. I just want to see it on the one hour chart, four hour charts, and maybe like eight hours or lower time frames. So I can just put it over here. Another cool thing I've done here is, for example, my Tokyo session strategy. I only treat it on the five minute chart and the 15 minute charts. So I don't want to see it on daily charts all the time. I don't want to have to put it back on my chart whenever I go there. So if I turn it on over here, you see what's shown now on all time frames. So I don't care about this, this stuff because it will just show on like every single bar because it's a lower time frame strategy. So what I'll do is I'll just go over here in the menu. Now click on the icon here to modify. Again, I have my inputs, I have all the stuff here. But I'll just take off here my one hour chart. I want to see it daily, weekly stuff. I just want to see it on the pretty much the five minute and 16 minute chart. So I can just put it right here. From minutes one to 59, it will show up on the chart. All of that, it will not show up. Then if I go here, I close this menu. Let's say now it's Tokyo session time. I want to trade that strategy on Tokyo session. I'll just go on the five minute chart. And this one shows up over here. My bone driven still show up, but I can take it off over here. So from actually from minute one to 15, bone driven chart will not show up that way. So see now it's like this. If I go on, let's say I want to have a custom time frame of anything else, then the bulge menu will show up. This one shows right there. So we're good to go. Now, if I go there, if I go back on a daily chart, moving average just show, mortgage rent doesn't show up, the issue session doesn't show up. So it's very automated. Like I have to like go back on the time frame, put in here by myself. It's all done for me there, right? All simple, which saves you time and makes things a lot easier. Okay, the other thing I want to show you here is the multiple monitor setup with TradingView. Cool feature for people who have multiple monitors at, at their desk. They want to have a one hour chart here, a different time frame here, or different pairs, different watch list. It makes it very cool. What you want to do to open this up is you go at the top right corner and you do need a paid description for this, I believe. You have a monitor icon over here, two monitors icon. Click on this and that will open up on your other screen a new kind of place to open the charts. So this right here is what it looks like now. We have training view on the big computer. And on this monitor here, we have a new window. Now, what I'll do is on this monitor here, I'll just open a new watch list. Let's say I want to have my second investing one, which is over here. So it'll open up. I can already change my watch list here to my investing watch list, right over here. Then I've got this here. This one is my investing one. And this one on the big monitor is still my Forex one. I can do this with all different kinds of instrument, different kind of time frames. It works quite well. I could even have a third one if I want to on the right. I could have my iPad with different charts if I want to, but two works well, three works well, the same. You can have as many as you want and it works quite well. I don't know that everyone is going to use multiple time frames, but if you want to, if you want to make things a bit easier for you when you have multiple monitors and use all of them at the same time, it's kind of a cool trick. Okay, now the next thing I want to show you here 
is something called deep backtesting. And I came up with this recently, fairly recent. It's a way to backtest, but get a bit more details in your backtests. So how this works out is you go on any pair you'd like and use any kind of script you want to have on your charts. So I have one here that's called my daily weekly bar section uh, reversal trading. This is the one I want to backtest. The deep backtest is still in beta, so not fully completed yet, but it's kind of a cool way to do it. So here are my things that are backtested with this strategy. Uh, by the way, I kind of like this feature here where you have your, first of all, you have your drawdown you can enable. So you see it might come drawdown over here, where it kind of shows on the right of your chart here, the, how much you're going to draw down. So my maximum here is 9,000. And we go here, roughly 9,000, I believe here also. So you can see like which trades and, and that stuff. It's kind of cool. And the other thing I like is uh, this is my equity. So the profit I have in green on my strategy. But then this is a cool one. This is a buy and hold liquidity. So if you want to like, like look at a stock and see your back there, compare how much profit it would have uh, if you just like buy the stock and hold it long term, like compared to your strategy that you have in the market. If you actively trade, you always want to be able to go beyond by quite a lot that buy and hold liquidity. It's kind of a point because otherwise you want to just buy and wait for the profits at the end of like a, a 10 years or something. It's worth it, right? On this pair here, of course, this is Forex. It goes up and down. You see the buy and hold will be very, very bad, right? We'll get to, at the end, uh, roughly break even, okay? Uh, we made like uh, $6,000 on a $100,000 account, so 6%. With my strategy, we get 45% profit here. Big difference, okay, you can see that. But the cool thing is with the deep backtesting, you can actually choose your dates when you want to start. You're going to have a lot more data here. So if I just go here, I can check and start from the first day available, which turns out to be 2011. Now we have more control on the date. And it will end here yesterday, basically, August 1st. Now we can see a bit more clearly how, how this works out. Okay, we have a bit more data here and we have more dates included. Uh, we can see a bunch more stats, which you can see the other way also. But I believe you have more things here. You can see your trades by default, everything here. And you can also export this and save this to your computer that way. You can do also with the non deep backtesting, but this one here gives you more control. So we, if you have a look here at what the deep backtesting is, it's an additional mode of operation for the strategy, which makes it possible to calculate the strategy on all historical data available for the selected symbol, and not only on what's loaded on the charts. It's pretty cool. So you get a lot more data that way, basically, with the deep backtesting. So kind of a cool feature, especially if you don't want to do backtesting by yourself manually. This is a cool feature to save time and do it with the scripts directly. Okay, I've got a cool one here for you, which is something that I kind of played around with a little bit. Like I, I kind of like it and find it very interesting, but I'm not sure how to use it exactly for Forex. It's this feature here on the right side. If you go to your watch list, right, the sidebar menu. On the right side, you've got an icon that's like a, a fire, right? It's called hot lists. And that is pretty cool. So you can see different exchanges and what are the biggest losers, biggest winners in the day. So I have some fun here. I was looking for Hong Kong because why not? And you can see this one here lasts like 50% in one day. Yeah, pretty cool. Um, now I'll just take on my script. Could have been a good breakout to trade for sure with my strategy. And you could, of course, back these things. I uh, don't have this for Forex yet. We have a lot of exchanges you can pick from here. So you have US, you've got even the OTC stuff, uh, which you don't have Forex in this anyway. Then you've got all these countries to choose from. So kind of cool if you want to especially invest, you want to find cheaper stocks that had a big decline, or you want to find things that are breaking out for a different kind of instrument. This could be cool. Uh, there's a lot you can play around with. So if you want to see, for example, I want to see the uh, Singapore stocks. I want to see the biggest, biggest range losers. And we show up over here, we can have a look. Kind of messy on this chart here, but we can see the biggest losers here on the charts that were in the range. That's pretty cool. Uh, so I'm not sure exactly how you would use this, but it's a cool feature to look at and it's good if you invest. And I'm sadly, I don't have any kind of forex thing there. You can see like different currencies. That could be pretty cool. You can see which, which currencies go down the most, which one go up the, the, the most, and all that stuff could be cool. It could be nice. Uh, but you can see these things here. You can have some fun with it. I want to do the biggest gainers here in the Toronto Exchange. You can see it here. It's kind of nice, kind of a cool feature there. Uh, so yeah, not sure how you would use this for Forex, but kind of cool for stocks and kind of your own interest. Now that last feature I want to show you here is something that will be useful for Forex for sure. And any kind of trading specifically. I'm talking about the economic calendar, which is here, the calendar icon on the right side in the uh, tab. And that one is special because you know, I hate to look at the news sometimes, I forget to look at Force Factory and stuff for my news. But this is a cool way to look at it in the morning when you wake up. Straight in the chart, you also get anything else, it's straight there for you. Okay, so you have all the news coming up. You can also select here if you want to have the only high importance one or all of them. So here will be all of them. 
you click that, it turns blue, and it's all the high important students only. So we got one today, 9.30 p.m. This is using your computer time, so EST. We got one tomorrow here at 7 a.m. We got one 10 a.m. and so, so on that way. So you can like plan it a little bit the week. You can see this more in details. And the cool thing is you can also choose your countries. So if you want to look at a specific country, where you're from or where you're living now, let's say I want to have the Thailand news because I live in Thailand a lot. Okay, go here, Thailand, do apply, and the Thailand news will show up over here. I'm not sure they have any news there, so we'll have a look for fun. We've actually got nothing until kind of far here. If I go and choose only Thailand, I've got one on the, on the 7th. All right, that's good. August 7. So we can see here the things that are happening in Thailand. Pretty cool. Pretty nice. So you guys have some fun with it. Make your own custom news feed, which you cannot do much on Force Factory. It's a lot better here to do it. Uh, the default is you'll have all these countries. I think I've quite a bit of them because I don't want to see all of them necessarily. But you're able to do it that way anyway if you want to. So if you do this, apply, then you go only in the high importance news, you'll reduce your feedback quite a bit. But see, you got a few more here that you can have a look at. So interesting stuff. Kind of nice to see. Oh, and at the bottom here, you also have the stocks that are having some earning releases. So you can have a look at these here. I don't care for this. Quite frankly, you could just remove this if I wanted to. And just make my new scholar bigger. But it's, it's there if you want to have a look at it anyway, for fun. So we covered a couple of features here already. Group. I want to have your thoughts in the comment section below. Let me know which one you know already, which one you will use, and which one you won't use. I'm curious to hear your thoughts in the comment section as always. Make sure you are subscribed to the channel here. I publish like this three videos a week. One or two videos every Sunday and two videos where I teach you trading tips during the week and some things I get from my own experience so you can learn and become a better trader. And I'll catch you back here in the next video pretty soon. Ciao.